Hello everyone, and as always, it is such a joy for me to bring you the Word of God on today. I hope that everyone is doing well. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, that 143rd book of Psalms. And we're going to begin at that first verse, and it reads, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy have persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. I stretched forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am your servant. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Holy Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that it will go out and accomplish what you sent it to do. Even now prepare hearts and minds to hear that faith will come in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. When considering the words of this psalm, it seems like King David was feeling somewhat hopeless or, or even depressed, somewhat in despair or just reaching out to God because he was in a place that he, he really uh, didn't feel too comfortable being in, which is something that we all can relate to. Amen. No doubt he could have been reflecting on any number of times or events in his life. Just, you know how we do sometimes we just sit around or if it gets too quiet, thoughts begin to come to our minds and, and things, uh, situations or circumstances or past events or, or even thinking of the, uh, what's going on in the present or even in the future. But King David, no doubt, in writing these psalms, and it's not just the 143rd, it's, it's, uh, uh, you can go back a few more books if you wanted to, but I'm sure that he was reflecting on times or events like, for example, um, when King Saul was, how you say, um, jealous of him, when he became jealous of him because of the honor given him to him through the ladies of the land, and even when he had attempted to what? To kill him. If you go with me to 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, and we want to look at that uh, fifth verse. It says, And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. He was, he, he was a man of stature and a man of character and a man of integrity. And it says, And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So David became so well respected. He became so well known. Why? Because he was a man of his word. He was a man of integrity. He was a man of character. The, character, the scripture says he carried himself well. It says that it came to pass as they, as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out and they began to sing. And so they said with their taperies, they said and their joy and, and making their music. And it says the women answered and said and played and said, Saul have slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Mm. And Saul became very angry about this. It bothered him. And he, like a little kid, began to pout. You know, they ascribed unto David 10,000, but only to me a thousand. And so it says that 
from that moment, he eyed David. He became very jealous of him. He began to look at him and see, you know, there's something about him. There's something going on with him. And when you consider this, it's something that's the beginning of something. And even in our own situation, it's something that happens and everything does happen for a reason, but it's something that's the beginning of something. And as you read along later on in the scriptures, you realize that this is something that David didn't even realize until later. Amen. Or what about the time when he changed his behavior um, before Akish, the king of Gath, in fear? And this is during the time when Saul was trying to kill him, David had to really flee. He had to get away from King Saul because he was really going out of his way to kill him. And there are other scriptures that you can reference um, to get us to this point. But it says that he he was he came into the king of uh, Akish of Gath, but he they already knew about King David. It was the first time that he heard what was going on. Isn't this the king where they were saying they were already calling him a king? Now he wasn't a king yet. Isn't this David, the king of the land, where they said they, the women ascribed to him 10,000 and only to King Saul 1,000? That was the first time that David realized what, was going, what the reason was. Go back and read your scriptures. And it says that in fear, he played the part of a madman. He began to scribble on the doors and the, uh, uh, of the gate and stuff like that and began to let his spittle run down his beard because he was trying to get away. And so the king got offended. And he was like, why are you bringing this madman before me? Get him out of here. And so David was able to flee. Amen. Or the time when he went to Cala, which was a town that was enclosed uh, by gates or bars. And this was a concern that King David had, or David had at this time, remember he wasn't king yet, because of the fact that he was wondering if the people were going to give him up. So 1 Samuel 23, um, let's look at verse 8. It says, And Saul called all the people together to war, to go down to Calah to besiege David and his men, because he heard that David was there. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. He knew that he was trying to, you know, plot something to uh, find a way to capture him. And so it says, then David uh, said, O Lord God of Israel, he says, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks. He's coming down here. He's coming this way. Will the men of Cala, will these people here in this village, in this town, deliver me up unto King Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver you up. And then said David, will the men deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver you up. So he let him know that King Saul was coming down and that the people, once he got there, are going to turn you over. So it says he got up and he fled. Troublesome times. Or the time when he went to uh, he began to hide out in the woods. Now, you have to remember King David was fleeing, or not a king at that time. He was fleeing for his life. So he was hiding out into the woods of uh, Hekela. Um, then he went to Maon because King Saul, somebody told King Saul that he was there. So then he went to Maon into the wilderness. And 1 Samuel 23, 24 says, And they arose and went to Zippah before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain of the south of Jeshimon. Saul also and his men went to seek him. He was still searching after him. It says, and they told David, wherefore he came down into Maon. And when Saul heard that he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon, wherever he heard that he was, that's where he was going. That's where he went. It says, and Saul went on this side of the mountain and David and his men went on the other side. And David made haste to what? To get up and get away. For Saul and his men compassed David. He was surrounded. And if you continue to read, you'll see that a messenger came and Saul had to be pulled away and David was able to escape. So, just like with King David, at any time, we too tend to reflect on any number of times 
times or events that take place in our life. Like I said earlier, these are times or events that cause us to feel like King David or David at the time, hopeless. We feel troubled. We feel depressed. We feel down. We feel like woulda, coulda, shoulda. We wish we could do things over. You know, it, it causes us to ponder on trouble with maybe in a marriage or, or a relationship, concerned about bills, um, children, our children, our in-laws, you know, the list could go on. It could be anything, but these things bombard us. And even though you put that smile on for the people and you're going and you're coming and everything, but in your heart of hearts, you really like this. You're just barely making it. You know, you're just doing the best that you can. But even as King David or David at his time asked, we too should ask. If you're looking at Psalms 143 again, my, he said, hear my prayer, O Lord. He says, give ear to my supplications or my humble request. When you think about the word trouble and the title is of various means, it is a disturbance or of mind or lack of peace of mind. It's, it's a negative experience, constantly being bombarded by negative things that you have done, negative uh, ideas, negative situations. It's also a test of our faith, or it also could be the consequences of our disobedience or sins. Amen. And what we want to do is we want to discuss this more, and we're going to do that in part two, amen, of this message. So go back and read what we already covered, and when we come back in part two, we're going to go a little bit further. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we're just so thankful. We're so thankful because we know that in spite of all things, you are in control. For Jesus Christ said, in the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we are confident, oh God, even in the prayer that King David prayed in Psalms 143, that we too can cry out unto you. We too can cast our cares upon you. We too can look to you from whence cometh all of our help. We ask even the more that you continue working in us both the will and to do of your good pleasure to Christ Jesus be formed in us again. And we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Again, we just want to say thank you for joining us on today. We ask that you would visit our website, that you would like, share and subscribe. We pray that you would just continue to read your word, continue to draw near to God as he draws near to you. Remember that God loves you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.
entrance into heaven. We praise you, Lord. Our way, our truth, our life eternally. Resurrection, salvation. We love you and we bless